Hey guys, it's the Metal Blade 5. We just had another E3 after last year's was cancelled due to... The Backstreet Boys Reunion Tour, as it's called on Game Grumps. So I felt the need to make something in this time frame where the timing was right and this can partly act as the calm before the inevitable shitstorm that will come with the next response video. But it will be a pretty short calm because this E3 basically had... NOTHING! <laughs> This is the worst E3 that I've watched because until Nintendo showed up, there was nothing I had seen that was both new and exciting for my personal tastes. And even then, I think that Nintendo's presentation wasn't their best one. They had quite a few games that I think weren't exactly E3 worthy per se, and they had announcements shed from the other weaker presentations that I managed to at least catch glimpses of, which made it feel a bit like a recap at times too. It's just that the bar was set so low that it felt better than it was with them actually taking it seriously. The one year when I watched some presentations outside of Nintendo, and I wish I hadn't because I want that time back. And it is yet again another year where almost the entire video will be on Nintendo due to how everything panned out. As for the other ones I did see, the first was Ubisoft, which was once again the one I saw the least of, though from what everyone else said about it, that appears to have been a blessing. And the one thing I saw was also the one thing that would have grabbed my attention. Mario plus Rabbids getting a sequel. I heard there was some kind of leak regarding this, so it didn't exactly surprise me when I saw it. But the idea of a sequel is surprising nonetheless. The first Mario plus Rabbids was a pleasant surprise that was a lot better than how it seemed in concept. Though, after all this time, I still have not gotten around to finishing it, partly because it's also shockingly difficult. But this is the kind of thing that would push me to finally doing that. And while the gameplay tease was exactly that, a tease, it seems to be following the same formula at its core, but making everything much wider, which I think is a good improvement. Then there was Square Enix, which I virtually watched all of, and the only thing that stuck out was that Guardians of the Galaxy game they announced. Partly for the wrong reasons. I have a lot of concerns for this game, given the way the Avengers game turned out. This one at least gave me a better first impression than what I got from Avengers when that was announced, but I still have fears over it potentially ending up in the same quality, so I'd need to see more before being certain. Yes, even after how unnecessarily long they focused on this one game, I'd still need to see more. Cause a lot of that was just repeating the same bits we saw in the trailer over and over again, while constantly tricking us into thinking it was over. Then it was just... Chaos. 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 Where's that damn fourth chaos? And the last one was Capcom's, which was just a recap of things already announced. The only thing that was really new was some text confirming DLC for Resident Evil Village. And while I'm very happy that we're finally getting the great Ace Attorney games, its segment was just a longer, wordier version of the announcement trailer. Ace Attorney isn't even something I would consider E3 worthy anyway, and I wonder how Japanese people would have reacted to the segment given they've had these games for years now. I can only imagine how bad most of the other presentations were to watch from what I've heard of them. Like a woke Zoom meeting. So now I can move on to the more positive impressions with Nintendo after my expectations had dropped so low. Obviously beginning the presentation with the next Smash Bros newcomer. And as soon as I saw an unconscious Ganondorf being carried, I knew what series it was, though I didn't quite get the right character. Get ready for the next battle. Kazuya Mishima joins the battle. This came as a complete surprise for me. For a long time, I've had the belief that if Namco were to get another character, then it should be from Tekken. But it didn't appear to be on the radar, so I never considered it as a real possibility. While the character I expected and would have wanted was Heihachi, I understand the likely reasons why they chose Kazuya. Being the original protagonist of the series and having the devil gene for moveset variety. I can see the effort they put into his moves as they look one for one the same as they are in the series. And I love how his final smash is his devil forms rage art from Tekken 7. On the other hand though... I'll kind of admit that this wasn't the most exciting ultimate reveal for me. I like Tekken, but there were other characters who I just wanted to see more. However, I'm still happy with this pick. 
It's probably the most I'll ever focus on Kazuya, since I don't think I've ever actually played as him in the games I have. I more gravitate towards Heihachi and Jin first, before branching out to others who grab my attention like Prototype Jack to spam the same move over and over. So, all in all... A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Then in a complete tone reversal, the next game that sort of grabbed my attention was Mario Party Superstars, a mashup and remake of the first three games. Feels weird to get another one so soon after the online update for Super. The big issue I had with Super Mario Party was that it felt like there wasn't that much to do. There was only four boards which were kinda small and not that exciting overall, so I see this as an improvement since it already has more stuff in the board and minigame departments. Bit of a shame that it's only five boards total, because I can think of multiple boards from each game that I'd enjoy and think would be fun. So, as unlikely as this is, I would like to see other boards get added through updates so absent ones could get to shine too. Maybe even add some from the GameCube era since there are a bunch of boards I really like from those ones too. Fair Square from 6 would be ridiculous online from how insane that board gets with its star counts. And then there was what was honestly the most exciting announcement of the whole Direct for me. A new Metroid game other than Prime 4. Metroid Dread. When I saw the name, I could have sworn I had heard it used before as like a fan concept for a new game, which felt very weird to see become real. Turns out it was actually an official Metroid game concept that had been around for years but got repeatedly cancelled due to being unable to live up to Sakamoto's vision for it until now. Apparently everyone else knew this from the reactions I've seen, but I didn't. I think just the idea of this long planned out game finally becoming a reality is cool in of itself. Then you have how promising the game looks, being a combination of the gameplay from Samus Returns with the tone and atmosphere of fusion. Namely the fear factor, since I can picture myself getting easily panicked when playing this. Those Emmys are essentially the SAX, but if there was more of them. It leaves me very curious to see just how the story plays out with the follow-up to fusion and all the horror vibes that the trailer gives off. I still find it hard to believe that this is only coming out in a few months, assuming everything goes as planned, since this really feels like the kind of game that would be treated as a big deal, and then would be stated to come out next year or later. This makes me more excited in a way, since I don't have to wait too long to have my newfound anticipation answered, but hopefully it hasn't been rushed in any way. Though, with all the history behind this game's creation, I don't have any reason to believe that that's the case. So back over to the world of the Mario spin-offs, they announced a new WarioWare game. WarioWare is not the kind of thing I'd expect to see featured at E3, more so in just a standard direct. It doesn't even feel that long since Gold came out, even though that was mostly a remaster of the previous entry's micro games. But I'm still glad about this. I found WarioWare fun and played a ton of Gold back when it released. My only possible concern with this one is that since the title, Get It Together, refers exclusively to the new multiplayer feature, I'm worried that this is one of those games where it's practically designed or way more suitable for multiplayer rather than on your own. Cause if that's the case, I'm gonna hit a brick wall since I'm a lonely fuck who has nobody to play with. And even after Gold, I still find it weird to hear Wario speak in full sentences. Now for something completely different. Something to bring about... despair. A body has been discovered! Danganronpa Decadence. I have never played a Danganronpa game, and had not seen anything of them despite knowing the premise and hearing of the similarities Days Attorney, until I watched Game Grumps play through the first game. There, I actually got really invested in the plot, to the point where I was repeatedly like, I want to see what happens next, and feeling really smart when attempting to figure out who done it in the trials. Aside from tons of commenters and YouTube recommendations spoiling almost every single death and plot twist in the whole game, which severely hampered my experience watching it. It's from the engagement I got watching that playthrough that I've been kind of interested in playing the other two games myself, which Decadence would provide, however I have a plight. Not only did those spoilers pop up for the first game, but those same things led me to getting spoiled on what happens in the other games too. I know almost all the deaths and killers and even the huge plot twists of 2 and 3 as well. So I'm left in this situation where I think, What's the point of playing them when I know everything that's going to happen? When these are the types of games that should always be experienced blind. 
If only there was some way for someone to hypnotize me into forgetting those spoils to get the surprise back. Cause they would make an absolute fortune. My only hope is if they made a fourth game, but I know for a fact that that's not something being planned right now. Only the possibility of one in the future. Well, I guess there's also Super Danganronpa Party! Pay 20 coins to kill someone! Finally, the last of the notable announcements for me was the Zelda segment at the end. Starting off with the Age of Calamity DLC, which... Eh... wasn't as exciting as I'd hoped. I mean, a playable Guardian is cool, and so are the new weapons like the Master Cycle, but there were just other possibilities for DLC I would have preferred and have to hope are in the second pack. My main thing is that I really want Aster to be playable. I thought he was a fun villain from the way he acts, but he didn't get that much screen time despite being the main villain. I fully expected him to be an unlockable character after finishing the story, but he isn't. Then I was left hoping they would do what they did with the original villains in the first Hyrule Warriors and make him DLC, but they haven't. And now I'm worried it won't happen at all, which will be a huge wasted opportunity for someone who I also think could have some cool moves when given creative liberty. So on to the way more exciting Zelda announcement, and to end it all off... Breath of the Wild 2! The feelings of surprise, anticipation, and questions were all intertwined in my head as the trailer played. We've got seemingly mixing Breath of the Wild with Skyward Sword in this utterly breathtaking sight. Link's now like a cyborg or something? He's got Sheikah Slate abilities built into him with cool new ones to boot? Hyrule Castle's turned into Angel Island? Zelda's gone again? And there's still the Ganondorf or at least what appears to be Ganondorf's corpse questions left unanswered. WHAT IS HAPPENING?! This feels even more absurd than when I first saw Breath of the Wild. I have so little to say? Only because I can't really find the words to describe my excitement for this whilst also being very weirded out by what's going on. This is the exact kind of game I expect to be shown as a big deal, only for it to be at least a year off, so I was not surprised that that is the case. If I had to have any general concern in this instance, though it's only based on an extremely limited view we got in this area, for the very brief bits we see of Link on the surface, the environments look almost identical to how they were in Breath of the Wild, which is somewhat to be expected since it is the same world, but it leaves me concerned thinking that the surface won't be changed that much, leaving roughly half of the game, if I had to estimate, being exactly the same as before outside of new enemies and hazards to feel like a rehash. Again, that's purely based on the very limited view we got of the surface in the trailer, so I hope that I'm completely wrong for whenever more of this game gets shown in the future. Which they likely have a lot more time to do so. So if an E3 that was mostly uneventful and only having a few announcements that I'd really say got me super excited to the standard I would normally expect from E3 over the past several years, I have no idea how to end off this video. Hmm... Chaos.